Hello, in this video we're going to look at a traffic model. And so we have four intersections in this model. Let's label them as A, B, C, and D. And the basic idea here with this traffic model is um, the traffic flowing in has to equal the traffic flowing out. So we need in equals out, and this is in terms of uh, vehicles per hour. And if we don't have in equals out, the problem is we're going to have a backlog of cars and get a traffic jam. We don't want that to happen. So this is a particular uh, setup for pretend city, and this is, example is actually from a Gareth Williams uh, textbook. What we want to ask here, what we want to answer, is what is the minimum number of cars? What is the minimum number of cars? What is the minimum number of vehicles on X3 that we need in order to keep traffic flowing? Okay, so. We have four intersections. Let's set up four equations. So for intersection A, traffic in has to equal traffic out. So coming into this intersection, we have x1 plus x2. And what goes out, we've got 400 vehicles per hour and another 225 vehicles per hour going north. That's a total of 625 vehicles per hour. For intersection B, in equals out. So what's coming in here is we have a 350 and a 125 so that gives us 475 coming in and what's going out is an X1 plus X4. For intersection C again in equals out so what's coming in here is a X3 plus a X4 and what goes out is 900 and lastly for intersection D what comes in, we've got 800 and 250, so that gives us 1,050. And what's going out is x2 plus x3. If we put this in an augmented matrix, we get 1, 1, 0, 0. 625 followed by 1001 zero, zero, one, 475 zero, zero, one, one, 900 and a 0110 one, zero, one, zero, zero. Once we put this in reduced rational and form we get a matrix that looks like the following. 1, 0, 0, 1, 4, 75, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 150, 0, 0, 1, 1, 900, and last row all zeros. And so what we find is we get infinitely many solutions, and that's a good thing in this scenario because if there was only a unique solution, um, we'd have to regulate traffic very tightly in order to make this city flow well. But let's take a look at the types of solutions we get because we're really interested in, you know, what's the minimum flow on X3. So let's see, X1, X2, X3, and X4 is going to be a free variable. But X1 is going to be negative X4 plus 475 and in x2 that's going to be x4 plus 150 and x3 is going to be negative x4 plus 900. Now in terms of minimal flow, uh, traffic flow must be positive in this model anyways because if it were negative we'd have cars driving backwards and that would lead to all sorts of trouble. So we, we mandate that the traffic flow must be positive and so to figure out the minimal flow along X3 
we have to figure out um, what's the maximum that x4 could be so that we don't get negative flow, right? So um, what's the maximum? What is the maximum of x4? Because if we maximize x4, that leads to a minimum on x3. And that's happening right here because of this uh, last equation. All right, so, so now we're looking at what's the maximum of x4. Well, the maximum of x4, if we look at these first two equations, the maximum that x4 could take on without causing either of these other equations to be 0, um, the maximum for x4, well, that would be 475. Because if x4 were any bigger, then x1 would be negative. So let's write that down. The max flow on x4 would be 475 because if x4 were any bigger or any greater, then the equation x1, which is negative x4, plus 475, um, if x4 were any greater, x1 would be negative, and we can't allow x1 to have negative traffic flow. All right, so the max flow on x4 would be 475. That's important information. If x4 is 475, then the min flow on x3 turns out to be 425.